welcome to Indiana basketball. And so I hopefully you enjoyed. That's my audition video so I can play for the Harlem Globetrotters. But if they won't take me, maybe I'll be able to play for the Washington Generals. That's who always plays against the Harlem Globetrotters and loses about every single time. But hopefully you enjoyed that and are enjoying the nice weather in between rain showers. And, you know, one time when we were traveling out to Colorado, we stopped at a restaurant in Nebraska. And the waiter goes, is it really true that everybody from Indiana, can they quote the movie Hoosiers? And the guy took, you know, brought our water and then he left. And then when he came back to take order for food, I just started quoting some of the lines from the movie Hoosiers. You know, you're playing Cedar Knob tomorrow night. No one knows him better than me. You got to squeeze him back in the paint. You got to make him chuck it from the cheap seats. Watch that purgatory they call a gym. No drive 12 foot in. That'll do. And then also Chris's dad, he can say this one really good. You know, it says, Cletus, you tell him. Remember sectionals 33? One point down. Five, four, three, two, one. Let her fly. In and out. Well, ugh, I was fouled. And so hopefully... Maybe you can quote some lines from the movie Hoosiers, but, you know, another quote is, you're in the army, you're in my army, every day, three to five, or e-learning, nine to three, and so, and my practices are not designed for your enjoyment, so, we're teaching in a basketball jersey today, and shorts, shorts aren't even allowed to teach in at school, and so... I guess it's, I'll wear the jersey today. I wore overalls last week, so you just never know what's coming for the next e-learning day. And so for those of you that are involved in math counts and an academic Super Bowl, I had a link here for the academic Super Bowl competition outline. Here are some practice questions, and if you're serious about doing this, you want to click on these, and then... You want to, the answers are right here, but you want to see what the questions are going to be like. You're going to have 40 minutes, and it's going to be on a Google form. And so you'll get a question, and it'll say, what's the probability of A is one-half, probability of B is one-third, and A and B are mutually exclusive. What is the probability of A or B? In probability, when you see the word or, you add the fractions. When you see the word and, you multiply the fractions. And then you add them, and you get five, six, and the answer is over here. But it's this next one that we haven't gone over at all. And this has to do with exponential functions. And so with exponential functions, you have this. You might have after 20 years. Well, years is a time. And then it'll say k is 0.26. So well, you plug that in. And then we'll say after 20 years, 25,000 rabbits populate the area. Well, that's either going to be a, that's the initial, what you start with, or y is the final what you end with. And so if it says, how many rabbits did you start with originally? Well, that means the 25,000 is going to be Y. And so you're going to take E, which is a button on your calculator. It is above the natural log button. And if you do E, and you hit that, the second button, you actually get something that looks like E caret. And then you would type in 0.26 times uh, 20, and that would give you a number, and that's what you'll divide 25,000 by. And so, and then see if you can get the answer of 138. So I would work on these before you just go, I'm going to take the contest. And so, because we want a good score. And I don't think Discovery's taking it. And so we got a chance to get them. And Honey Creek, I don't think they're taking it either. And so a lot of schools that are our competition might not be doing it. And so we want you to take this contest. Okay? And so, but do go through these practice ones first. And so you're kind of familiar with them. There's another one. That's a negative exponent. And so that's when we're doing exponential decay because the graph would go down and then decay. A positive would go and then grow like coronavirus stuff is exponential. Okay? And so you look through these, there's some function table stuff, sixth graders, you guys could do this. Yes, we can do function tables. And we're learning about graphing lines and what functions are, and then they have it mixed up. But there's about 20 questions here. I think the real competition might be 30. I think so. And 
you want to make sure you get it done in the 40 minutes. And so there is an inter interdisciplinary round two, and you can take that, but then you'll have some English and science and social studies questions that you might not be an expert on from the 1920s. But if you are, give it a shot. And less people will take the interdisciplinary. I guarantee it. So you want to make sure you do it because that gives you a good chance of doing well. This all has to be done by 10 p.m. Thursday night, 40 minutes for each test. So if you do the math one, it's 40 minutes. And so when you click on this, it's going to have you type in your email address, then go down our schools in the second list. Read the whole line. We are not Northridge Middle School of Crawfordsville. You know, that's where Lincoln and Kirsten live. Crawford. No, they don't. They live in LaGrange. But you pick the one that says Middlebury. Otherwise, we're giving good scores to another team. We don't want that. We want to keep our scores. Okay? And then you fill through. You have to commit to your honesty. Wait, get that off. And then the time you're starting. Is it a.m.? Is it p.m.? And then you have to keep track of the 40 minutes. Because on the Google form, if you take too long, they might just disqualify you. So make sure you're done. Set a little timer, 40 minutes, and get that done, okay? And I don't really know how, what the questions look like because I don't log in. And so you need to take it without any notes, but use a calculator. And it said, even though on the practice round said you had to use a certain type, you guys, Millers, you know, you can use your Casios or Sanyos or smart whatever calculators you guys all use. So any of them are allowed this time, so don't worry about that. Okay, so take attendance and we'll get right back to the notes. So make sure you take the attendance now. Don't wait till Sunday night and then go, I forgot to take attendance. Get that attendance in. Okay, and so we'll be ready to go from there. Let's see what we got in store for algebra today. And so as we go down, we're going to continue talking about equations with fractions, but this time the variables are going to be in the denominator. Oh, no. And that's why it gets its own day. But it's notes 119, and the homework's on page 305, 3 to 39, multiples of 3. Make sure you get your warm-ups done. If you forget, some of you forget, yes, you can go back and do them. But then you might have to wait till I fix your grade in power school, and sometimes it takes a little bit for all that to get adjusted. And so you want to make sure that you're getting your warm-ups done. Nothing's going to be counted late. You just need to get it done. And logic problems, I already got one student in algebra, a couple in pre-algebra that have already sent me their logic problems, those students. I try to get them done on the first day, and they're still doing that, and that's great. And so keep up the good work. And But today we got notes on equations with fractions, so send me your assignments from before. Even though the school says things are due on Sunday night, yes, your stuff will not be counted late. But on Sundays. Sunday morning, I'm not doing school. And so Sunday night, yeah, we're thinking about school, but we might not be replying to emails. We're getting ready for Monday. You want your stuff in on time so it gets in the loop of the papers. And if you want me to reply like I have a question, you need to be doing that during the normal times. And then you will for sure get answers. But right here on today's notes, this is 119. And you'll notice that today's equations look like Mondays, but we got letters in the bottom. And when you have letters in the bottom, that's going to lead to restrictions. Oh, no. And restrictions give us that headache of, oh, Y can't be this, and X can't be this, and A can't be this. And so we'll have to remember that. But usually that's only going to play a role on the last problems, the 39s, 36s, 33s not the 369. And always remember, three out of two people have trouble with fractions. Think about that one for a little bit. And so fractions are not people's favorite. But one thing that people really do like are proportions when you have two equal fractions. Because when you have two equal fractions, how do we solve those? How do we solve a proportion? Abigail, yeah, we're going to cross multiply. And so then we don't have fractions anymore. And when we cross multiply, that makes it pretty easy. We take 4 times this. And I know Colin's not going to show the step. He's just going to write 16 minus 4a. But you know, I'm teaching, so I'm going to write the step. It's 4 times the quantity 4 minus a. 
Then over here, we're going to take negative 1 times the quantity of a squared minus 4a. And then, after you cross multiply, to kiss your parentheses goodbye, we're going to distribute. Whoop, whoop. And we're going to get 16 minus 4a. And then over here, we're going to get the opposite of a squared, negative 1a squared. And then a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to be plus 4a. Well, how do we solve these when there's an a squared and an a? Lauren? Oh, we're going to set them equal to zero. Great job. And then what are we going to do, Ilya? We're going to factor it. Now, since this negative 1a squared is negative over here, I'm going to move that guy over here so he's positive. Or as Mingo likes to say, positive. And so that becomes a positive. When we move this 4a over, they don't cancel. If you got a positive on one side and a negative on the other, they do not cancel. They have to be the exact same thing on both sides to cancel. And so you are subtracting 4a from both sides. That would give you minus 8a. And then you get plus 16 equals 0. And then we're going to factor this a squared minus 8a plus 16. What is this going to factor into? Jacob, a minus 4 times a minus 4. Good job. And then what do these equal? What does a equal? Well, this would be a double rooted in high school. It's a point of inflection. And so, but a equals 4. And we would circle it. Oh, but what did we say? Remember the restrictions. And if we remember the restrictions, what is the restriction? Well, guess what? A can't be 4. And A can't be 0 either if you factored this. It'd be A times A minus 4. So A couldn't be 0 or 4. We don't care if it's 0. But guess what? A can't be 4. So, so much for that. We did all that work just to say no solution. Now, would there have been a better way to figure out that this had no solution. Just do it out, remember your restrictions, and get it. Well, there is a better way. We could have kind of factored first. If I would have factored this problem, this would be 4 over a times the quantity of a minus 4. And this, negative 1 over 4 minus a is the same as positive 1 over a minus 4. See, that would have been a true and false question on your quiz that we're not allowed to give you, so you're not taking any quizzes. But it'd be like, does that equal that, true or false? And I know how some of you love those true and false questions. But if we had a proportion, just like you can cancel up and down, you can cancel side to side. You just can't cancel diagonal. You do that, we're in big trouble. And so you could cancel these, a minus 4s. And then it's 4 divided by what gives you 1? Well, that'd be 4. That would have been an easier way to do it. But see, a can't be 4. And so there's still no solution. Okay? Does that mean everything's going to have no solution? No, but you got to be aware of that. But the book doesn't do that to you until you're all warmed up at the very end of your assignment. Okay? Let's do this second one right here. We're going to cross multiply. And so we're going to take this times this, and then we're going to take that times that. And so it doesn't matter which one you write first. We can write y squared minus 9 equals 6 times the quantity of y minus 3. So, Jack, what would that be? y squared minus 9 equals 6y minus 9? Oh, no, you're just joking. 6 times 3 is 18. Yes. And then what do we do with that y squared and that 6y? Bree, we're going to set it equal to 0. So this is what I want to see. This is why we're sending in your work. I want to see if you're getting this. It would be y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals 0. And this would factor into y minus 3 times y minus 3. And what would y equal? 3. And we could circle it. But you tell me, why isn't y 3? 
because it would be a restriction. It actually be a restriction along with y plus 3 times y minus 3 if you factored this. And your y minus, your restriction would be 3 or negative 3. Well, you can't have a 3, so too bad for that. And again, there is no value that would make those equal. And so I'm giving you the hardest examples on the notes. If we talk about the hardest ones, when you're doing the easier ones on your homework, then it's... Hey, so now we're going to be ready to move on to these next two problems. But before we do them, I have an error in what I typed. And what I typed does not have a nice answer. And so you might have noticed the video jumped a little bit because I did this and it's like, wait, these don't work out. And then I, it's like, these don't factor. And so we're going to change this problem. We're going to scribble out this X. And we're going to put a 1. And then we're also going to make this to a negative 4. I have multiple mistakes. And the same problems over here. So scribble this out, put a 1, and then make this a negative 4. And you're like, Mr. Nice, and why did we do the same problem twice? Are you really losing it? Have you been out much? Is it getting to ya? And so we're okay. We got this. We're just going to show you two different ways of doing this. It's like playing man to man defense or playing zone. You know, you can choose. Some one sometimes it has one advantage, sometimes it has another, you know, boxing one, a one, two, two. And so this way we're just gonna find you find our common denominator. And we're gonna multiply by our common denominator. And that's what we did before. Just multiply by the least common denominator. And I don't have time to write all that out. Over here though, we're gonna try to get a proportion. And some of you will like one technique over the other, and that's okay. My purpose is to show you different strategies and then see which ones you like as you're doing your homework tonight. Okay? So if we go to the one on the left, after we made this change, change the x to a 1 and made that a minus sign, our common denominator is going to be x times x minus 3. We, that is our common denominator, x times x minus 3. And if we multiply that side by it, we're going to multiply this side by x times x minus 3. But that's going to be pretty easy because anything times 0, 0. So we got that. But let's distribute. We distribute this to the first fraction. The x minus 3s cancel, and you just get an x. Here you distribute this to the second fraction. The x's cancel, and you get negative 4 times the quantity of x minus 3. And then you take this whole thing to the 3, and you get 3x, 3 times, nothing cancels because there's no denominator, 3x times the quantity of x minus 3. And then on the right side, when you multiply by 0, you get 0. Toughest part of the whole problem. Now, you got to be careful here, because when you distribute here, you're going to distribute a negative 4 to all of this. And hopefully I don't make any mistakes. So we got x plus negative 4x. Negative times a negative is a positive, so we got plus 12. And then here we got 3x times x. Bree, is that going to be 4x or 3x squared? 3x squared, good job. And then 3x times 3, Ethan? Yes, it's going to be minus 9x. Don't forget to get your warm-ups done. And so that's minus 9x equals 0. And then when I combine like terms, I'm going to get 3x squared. And then this is minus 9, minus 13, plus 1. That will make minus 12x plus 12. Now, I could factor this right away. What could we do, Ryan? What'd you say? Yes, we could divide by 3. If you divide everything by 3, you'll just get x squared minus 4x plus 4. And you could factor out a 3, but since it's an equation, you can actually just divide by 3. And then this will factor, unlike my original problem that I tried to factor, and it's like, Man, when I was typing this, I was typing it way too fast and made multiple mistakes. But this one will factor, so this is nice. The next last chapter we do before summer is doing the quadratic formula. But x minus 2 times x minus 2, so x equals 2. And that's a lot of work. 
That's a lot of lines. And notice two is not a restriction. The restrictions were three and zero, which we don't have to worry about because it's not a two. But let's do the same problem over here and show you what I mean by a proportion. A proportion is if we could get two equal fractions. Like on this side, we get one times x minus three. And if we move these over to the other side, I would get 4 over x, because the negative 4 would become positive, and the 3 would become a negative. And then you'd find a common denominator, and this would actually be 4 minus 3x all over x. And then what you would do is you would cross multiply. 1 times x is x, and then this times this, you have to FOIL which might be a little difficult because the subtraction is backwards. But if we could FOIL this, this times this, you would get 4x minus 12, just got to make sure you get first outside, inside, last, which I'm not doing in order, plus 9x minus 3x squared. If you multiply all that together. And then going the other way, 1 times x is x. Well, if you set equals 0, notice how this is a negative 3x squared. So I want to move that over to this side. And I'll move everything over at the same time. And notice you're going to get 3x squared plus, nope, plus negative 12x, which is minus 12x, plus 12, plus 12. And then you notice. We're back right where we started from. This line right here is the exact same thing as this line. So it doesn't really matter how you get there. If you want to set, try to get a proportion, move a couple fractions over to one side, cross multiply, or do the whole thing and clear all the fractions, it's up to you. It's a free country. And so either way on that. And so we want to look now at the very last problem. Okay, so then this just goes to this answer, and of course both problems have an answer of x equals 2. And so, look at this last one here. And we're going to factor the denominators first. On all the hard ones, you need to factor these denominators. This is going to factor into x minus 2 times x plus 3. Well, it's going to factor into x plus 2 times x minus 3. Oops, almost goofed that one up. This is going to factor into, what is it? Ilya, x plus 2 times x minus 2. Very good. And then the last one, how do we factor that? Judah, pull a 2 out. Great job. So that's 2 times x plus 2. Well, without making this super hard, notice how all these denominators have a factor of x plus 2. So instead of like dividing both sides by x plus 2, if we multiply both sides by x plus 2, all those would be gone. And so really all that I have left is this over this, this over this, and this over this. Because these denominators aren't really here because they all got factored. And so when I write this side, x minus 2 over x minus 3, Then over here, I have 1 over x minus 2. Don't think those cancel. And right here, plus 3 halves. See, if you like to write a proportion, what you can do is just find a common denominator for this side and then cross multiply. So this would be x minus 2 over x minus 3. And this side, the denominator would be 2 times the quantity of x minus 2. So the first fraction, you got to multiply top and bottom by 2. Second fraction, multiply top and bottom by x minus 2, which would actually give you 3x minus 6. So this entire numerator here is 3x minus 4. And so we'll write that in a different color so I don't have to rewrite this whole fraction. So this becomes 3, that's a terrible 3, 3x minus 4. And then we're going to FOIL 3x minus 4 with x minus 3. 
And that's going to make 3x squared, when we cross multiply, minus 13x plus 12. And then on the other way, when we cross multiply this way, you have 2 times the quantity of x minus 2 times x minus 2. So x minus 2 times x minus 2 is x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus or plus negative 4x plus 4. Talk too fast, can't think what I'm writing. And then we're going to distribute by 2. So then this side becomes 2x squared minus 8x plus 8. And then the other side is still 3x squared minus 13x plus 12. And then what? how do we solve this when we got x squareds and x's? What do we do? Cam? Yeah, set it equal to 0. And so subtract 2x squared from each side, you get x squared. Add 8x from both sides, you get 5x. Subtract 4 from each side. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Woo. You guys, oh, Mr. Nice made a mistake. I got to email him. 2 times this, 2 times this, and 2 times this. Just seeing if you're awake. That's supposed to be an 8. Ha, ha, ha. And so then... We're going to subtract 8 from both sides. That's going to be a 4. So it's x squared minus, 4, minus 5x plus 4. And then we're going to set equal to 0. And what is that going to factor into, Joe? Yes, x minus 4 and then x minus 1. And then, Erica, what is x equal then? Yes, very good. x equals 1 and 4. Oh, that brace is not that good. I got to slow down here. Make a little brace with a mouse. If you can do this, this is, well, that one isn't too bad. So my answers are one and four. I do have to look at the restrictions. Restriction of negative two, restriction of two, restriction of three. That's not these. So we're good. Notes are done. Woohoo! And so get out a piece of paper, and I'm going to give you some hints on some of the homework problems, okay? So. You get ready for some of the homework, and I'm going to start in a second. Take a look at some of the homework problems and look at some hints for you. And so on the page, again, the book does this, and it says 1 to 6 do the oral exercises. So just solve problem 3, solve problem 6, and you can do it either way. You can multiply both sides by 12y, or you could rewrite this side as 16 minus y over 4y and then cross multiply if you wanted to do that and that equals 1 12th and then you could cross multiply and so 6 you can for sure cross multiply so 3 you could multiply both sides by 12y either way for problem 6 and then problem 9 and problem 12 9 cross multiply just remember the restriction is a 4 here, put this over 1, cross multiply. Remember the restrictions of 2. So if you get 2 for an answer, there's no answer. And then when we get down to these, they just get a little bit tougher. 15, a couple ways you could do it. You could cross multiply. Just remember, this has a restriction. You set this equal to 0. And m cannot equal 6 fourths, which ends up being 3 halves. So if you solve it and you get an answer, make sure it's not three halves, because if it is, there's no answer. Problem 18, you can cross multiply. Problem 24, if you just move this to the other side and make the top a negative three, then you can cross multiply. Or, what's that, Preston? Yeah, you could keep the bottom, you could keep the top of three and make that three Z minus nine. Because just switch to subtraction. That's like moving it to the other side, and then you can cross multiply. Okay? 27. This would be, you could multiply both sides by x times x plus 1. Or you could move this guy over, because he's a negative, put him over here, and this whole side would become x plus 1 over x, because it'd be 1 plus 1 over x, then the common denominator. And so then you would be cross multiplying this with this and you have to foil you get x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 4x problem 30 
You could multiply both sides by 1 minus x times 1 plus x if you wanted to. Might work. For 33, what I would do on this one is see how these have the same denominator? I'd put them on the same side, and I'd move this minus fraction. I'd put this one over here. And so what you'd really have is n minus 2 minus 1, which is really n minus 3, over n equals n minus 3 over n minus 6. And then you just cross multiply, n minus 6 times n minus 3. Or you could cancel the n minus 3s horizontally, but you know, be careful if you're going to take those shortcuts. 36, I want this factored. C times C minus 2. But the second fraction, I could make this a C minus 2 if I would just make the top a negative 1. If you make this a negative 1, this becomes a C minus 2. Then all you have to do is multiply this one top and bottom by C. And you would get negative 1C. And this would be over that. So your problem 36 would look something like this. 2 minus C over C times C minus 2 equals 1. And you could cross multiply or you could cancel. 2 minus C over C minus 2 cancels and gives you a negative 1. And then just cross multiply. Now that cuts you a lot of work and you'll get the right answer right away. And then we're on 39. See, I can always tell who doesn't watch these videos to the end because they do the hard homework. I don't know how to do the last ones. Did you watch the video? I went through exactly how to do the last ones. Oh, really? You actually uh did? And so this one here, you need to factor this into 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. You need to factor this into 2 times 2x plus 1. And this one is so ugly that you might, you might want to just multiply both sides by, this is your common denominator, 2x times 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. Now, I know 39 is in the back of the book. But I want to see your attempt. Maybe you just want to clear the fractions and multiply by this. This is your common denominator. And the reason, and you got a minus sign there. You can do it any way you want, but check it out. Okay? And so we have, it's a Wednesday. Some of you need to do that academic Super Bowl stuff. And I won't know if you did it. So you need to email me and say, Mr. Nison, I brushed up on what a one to one function is, exponential functions. I brushed up on what mutually exclusive and compound probabilities are, and then do that. And that has to be done by Thursday night. And do the math one and do the interdisciplinary one. And so we can get this. And so we need you. And I some of the schools, Honey Creek, I don't think's doing it. Discovery's not doing it. We could be in the top. And so you could get something. So make sure you have that. And so just to end with a couple more Hoosier quotes. From the movie, said, if you put effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says at the end of the game. In my book, we're going to be winners. And so, also to, quote, also to quote the great coach Normandale, I love you guys. And so, hang in there. Send me your homework. Email me. And when you get stuff done, send it right away. And don't wait till Sunday night. Okay? Hey, we'll see you guys later.